Hello everyone, Michaela here. I'm Cinematic Stitches and welcome to my channel. I have a few things to cover today and I figure I may as well just dive right into them. Uh, it's been three weeks since we spoke last. I'm filming this on the holiday Monday here in Canada. It's Victoria Day. It is quite grim looking outside. We just had like a very long stretch of, well, long for May anyway, of like really hot, like unseasonably hot weather. Like it was 30 degrees last weekend. And all through this week, it's been absolutely lovely, which is really nice. Um, I forgot to put on some sunscreen the other day. So, you know, we got a bit of a burn, but that's fine. We've got some aloe, it'll be fine. Um, but it, it's, uh, you know, I'll take it, it's nice. Last May was like so cold. <laughs> So the fact that it's warm, um, and even though it's cloudy today, it's still like 18, so I'll take it. Um, but that's to say, I'm, I'm working with the cloudy sky here. It's still providing some good lighting uh, for these projects. So let's dive right in and let's see what we've been working on. Okay, so to start off, if you watch my last video, I was talking about how I wanted to start the Manning May Sal that is being hosted by four floss tubers. Uh, that's Cam the Stitcher, Marjorie Maid, the Seattle Stitcher and the Museum Stitcher as well. Um, I was hoping to start May 1st, that did not happen. My fabric was delayed, but it did eventually arrive and I was able to make a start. So um, we'll start with the one new start I've had in the past three weeks. And that is the Sunroom Runner from Carolyn Manning. Looking absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this is just the center motif. Yeah, there you go, we can kind of you can see I'm filling in a bit here with like a, this kind of off-white color. It's kind of a cream. Um, I love this pattern. It's just stunning. So, so gorgeous. I am stitching with the called for DMC on this. I'm stitching this on a 16 count country French cafe mocha that I got from 123 Stitch. It is a beautiful Ada, like really, soft and nice to work with um they're making ada better and better these days let's just say that like i still have some incredibly stiff ada in my house but some of the projects i've been working on recently with i, well, I don't even want to say it's newer ada but the, the ada i've been working with recently has been really nice and soft and like i've been loving it so anyway we went with a 16 count ada for this I went with the called for DMC except for this one color here. I can't remember what it was supposed to be, but my Michaels has not had it in stock for like a month and a half. <laughs> so I was like, I went back in last week to see if I could finally secure it. Could not. So I just made a substitution. Um, I went with something that was kind of close to what I saw in the picture, but maybe it's a little more yellow, which I kind of like. So... I'll put what I substituted down on the screen. I honestly can't remember and I didn't put it in my notes, but that's my one substitution. But I love this. It's looking so pretty. I don't know how long this will take me to finish. I have been working on this on Mondays exclusively um, just because I have a bunch of other projects I want to be getting work on. So it's been my like Manning May on Mondays, Sal. And I think I'm going to continue working on it each Monday until it's done just because it's really pretty and I'm loving it like let's get a closer look at that once again it's so nice pretty I can't wait for it to be finished I'll put the um, pattern here so you can see what it's gonna look like when it's done but yeah it's basically gonna look like just a big old rug <laughs> a really nice one <laughs> so I've been enjoying this quite a bit I've put three days into this and like for me a day can be anywhere from like a single strand to like several hours of work so that's that's what we've got at the end of three days three Mondays I was working on it a little bit this morning um okie doke well let's move on to my other whips so I mentioned in my previous videos that you were going to be seeing quite a bit of this project and here it is again it is the Chopping Mall from the Witchy Stitcher. So this got pulled for, uh, on my Whipgo board this month. I had to finish two rooms. No, no, wait, that's, that's not true. Last month, I had to finish two rooms. This month, I had to finish one room and spend five days on the border. 
Now working on the border, I have realized, like I thought, oh yeah, no problem. I'm gonna be able to finish this project by the end of the year. The border is big, <laughs> especially when you consider all the characters that need to go in uh, along the bottom and also the roof. Like the roof is massive and I haven't even started it. So we'll see <laughs> how we do this year, but I'll show you what I, actually did work on recently. Okay, so last we last time we were here, I had finished this room down here with Jason Voorhees. Uh, so at the beginning of the month, I worked on filling in this bottom border here. I did all these, like kind of, I carried the black border along down to here. I added, I think this is Annabelle, the creepy doll, here. I still have to fill in part of the bench. This is a trash can. And this is gonna be a sewer with it hiding in it, the clown, Pennyworth, the clown. So that's fun. Um, I haven't managed to do him yet. That'll be a future. Uh, but I also have started on the room that I need to complete by the end of this month, um, which I'll definitely get to. I was hoping to have it completed by the time I filmed this floss tube, but there's something about this pattern that I, I know exactly what it is about this pattern that I find exhausting. It's all the color changes. Like, and it's not even that bad in this room, but it's something about like doing like little patches of color and then having to change. I just find it like tiring and I, do, I go slowly when I do that, but it's fine. It's cute. We have the Grady twins from The Shining here. They are janitors, I suppose. Um, there's some back stitching that needs to be done. There's like a little, there's like a little blue, uh, like a white man in this blue box here. And then it's gonna say red rum up here with like little French knot soap bubbles. So I need to add that in. There's this fountain here that I need to put some gray, like some darker gray in. You can see there's some light gray there. There needs to be some darker gray like highlights around it. And then this topiary needs to be finished as well. But then once that's done, that's the room. And then I technically only have one room left, which is like the rest of this section. And then it's just frame from there on. But you can see what I mean? Like this is the top of the project right now. That's all I have. There's a big roof on this thing. So I actually don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish that by the end of this year and I really wanted to, but we'll see. I might like make this a focus piece in October or something like spooky stitching or whatever, even though I had plans for October, but we'll, we'll, we'll make it work. We'll see where we end up. But anyway, I, I do really love this project. I'm really excited to see it like getting closer to a finish because it's my second oldest whip. I started it summer of 2020 and I just really like it done. Oh, for those curious, this is on a 14 count Ada that I dyed myself with black writ dye to get this kind of like charcoaly color. And I'm doing it with all DMC. Uh, so yeah couple more days into that and I'll have it finished by the end of the month like I mean really one focused day I could probably do it but realistically probably like a couple mornings of stitching and it'll be done so we had that I also spent some time with the dark queen of the earth from autumn lane stitchery I didn't touch this at all last month and I'm like really far behind but I didn't really expect to keep up fully with this whip just because there's so much stitching every month. I just like, I don't have the time for that with the amount of other projects I wanna be working on. But I did get a fair amount done. Uh, for me anyway, I, I think I'm happy with my progress. Let's just say that. So I'm not taking her out of the Q-snap because I just, I'm gonna be working on her again next month and I just don't wanna, I can't be bothered to move it right now because I'm still working in this section. But this is the bottom of her dress. So um, I'll throw a photo up here of what I had done before, but I still had not finished like the end bits of her tail. I guess it's the dress, the end of her dress, the tail of her dress. I had not finished, but that is now completed on this side. And I've started adding the plants here that she's kind of near like, there's a bunch of like tree and like plant life around her including these like really cool vines. So I wanted to get those in, trying to get, yeah, that's a bit better for lighting. 
So this is looking really beautiful. I really like working on this project. I There are a fair amount of color changes with this, but because it's so big, like I like just being able to complete a chunk of color and then move on to another. So yeah, I really, <laughs> I really love stitching with it. It's so beautiful. It's gonna take me like a zillion years to finish, but I don't mind. She's gonna be gorgeous, darling, when she's done gorgeous. Look at that. Okay, so that was something I worked on, I think I worked on her like five days this month. I had two other whips, one being the raccoon. So if you weren't aware, the raccoon is from Cottage Garden Samplings. It's this pattern. He's sure sweet. Love raccoons. We have a lot of raccoons here in Vancouver. They're very cute to look at, but like, you don't want to go near them. <laughs> They're a little feisty, let's just say that. Uh, anyway, this is what I've got. So previously, it looked like this. I gotta remember that I'm putting pictures up last time. And now, I'm working on his haunch. <laughs> and I added a bit more to his tail. So, uh, actually no, this was here before. I carried the line down, I added this darker bit, and I added this like little bit here on his haunch, and then carried the pattern a little over as well. This is being stitched on 28 count vellum from Picture This Plus, and I'm really liking stitching on it. 28 count's nice. And uh, yeah, I'll get you a little closer there so you can see those stitches looking good I don't know how long it'll take me to finish I'm like and I'm tr I'm trying to debate too if I want to be like this be a seasonal piece because I started this for spring and it is technically one of the spring patterns in the year of the woods but we'll just see how I feel I might just keep going I mean like raccoons chill out year-round so <laughs> I can uh I'll see how I feel. We'll see where the raccoon journey takes us. But it's so cute. I really like stitching on him. And I'd love to make him into a little pillow. He's so sweet. Okay, and my final whip was one I was working on yesterday. So this is a, uh, it's kind of like an anniversary stitch for me. I started this at the beginning of the year for my husband and I's dating anniversary. We've been dating for, four, well, we're not dating anymore. We are now married, but we were, we, it was like our, 14th anniversary of being together kind of thing at the beginning of this year. So that's when I started this. I got a really tiny start on it. You can see that here. Um, so this project is called We We Are Made For Each Other by The Witchy Stitcher. And I love it so much. So I picked this up again yesterday because this weekend is my husband and I's first wedding anniversary. We got married last May, 2022. It was great. We watched our wedding video again. Uh, we don't have a typical wedding video. Our wedding involved four local bands playing and we filmed that. So we watched those sets and it was really cool. Um, so that was fun. And yesterday to commemorate the date, I picked up We Are Made For Each Other again. This is a pattern from The Witchy Stitcher as mentioned. And it's, you know, it's coming along. Um, I'm working on the side of the project that is uh, Bride of Frankenstein. So she's all white and gray and black, and then Frank, uh, like Frankenstein's monster beside her is gonna be all green, obviously. I will actually, let's just throw a picture of the pattern up so you know what it looks like. <sighs> um, anyway, so it's just, you know, we're making a little bit of progress. I see a cat hair floating in the wind. My projects are absolutely covered by my cat's hair, but that's fine. We love him. He should be integrated into every project. Uh, this is another Ada piece. I just love this. It's 14 count Ada. Uh, the color is Huntress from Picture This Plus, and ooh, it's nice to work with. Lovely fabric. And yeah, so that's coming along. This is like her eye region. This is her forehead. So I'm working on like not necessarily like color, oh well, yeah, kind of color completing um, by section. So I got all the, the white that was in this area done. There's a bit more like way over here, but I'm gonna wait until I fill in a bit more of the gray to get over there. 
Anyway, I really like this one. Another one I'm planning on making a pillow, which is gonna look awesome on my new couch. I got it, I got this couch like two months ago. It's still new to me. Wow, two months ago? A month and a half. Does it matter? No, but it's new, it's awesome. I love my new couch. It's gonna look sick with this purple pillow on it. <laughs> All right, um, that is it for whips. So I figured my haul and plans are kind of like intrinsically combined. So I'm gonna, I'll start with haul and then I'll move into plans. And that's how we're gonna do it. Okay, so to kick things off, um, I love how I started like my first video being like, I do a lot of haul. I did a lot of haul <laughs> this month, mostly to prep specifically for projects. So like I needed this Ada for um, the Manning Maysal and I was like, well, I'll go to one, two, three, one, two, three stitch. I know they have that. And while I was there, why not pick up a few patterns, right? So I got, I've been lusting for this pattern. Let's just say that. I finally got it. The bird man cometh. This was not available at Acorns and Threads when I was there uh, in April. So I was like, I want it so bad. I am obsessed with this. Like, look at these colors. And I have the perfect fabric to stitch this on. I'm like raring to start it. I already kitted it up. I don't know if I'll start it in the next couple weeks, but I definitely want to start it. Like, I don't know, maybe late June, early July kind of thing. Mm, I just love it. <laughs> so anyway, I got the bird man cometh. Very cool. I also got another one that I had my eye on from Nashville, which was from Summerhouse Stitchworks. It is Superior Bees. Look at that. It's like all steampunky. Very cool. I quite liked this. So I got the pattern. And I also got two patterns from Barbara Anna because I've never stitched anything from Barbara Anna and her stuff's pretty cool. And I just picked up some ones that spoke to me at the day, the day at the time. Uh, so I got this one, Witch Cat, very cute. And I also got Dear Dreams, Dear Dreams. Oh, so much glare, holy moly. Okay, there we go. Nice. Both very cute. Don't know when I'll start them, but I just kind of wanted to have them on hand in case I got, you know, a whim, a whim to stitch. Um, okie doke. Okay, so I also, okay, I went to my first, it was digital, but my first cross stitch retreat, nonetheless, I went to Spring Fling hosted by D's 20 Stitches and Uncanny Kari. It was totally awesome. Uh, it was like, I think it was May 7th that, yeah, it was May 7th. And it was just a lovely time. Just like hung out on a call, stitched away. And um, yeah, just had a grand old time. Kari went through some finishing techniques for the projects, which I will show you now. These projects are so cool looking. Like I am like a big fantasy gal. So the fact that both of them involve dragons makes me very excited. <laughs> uh, okay, so this one is the big piece. We go on, very cool, love it. Got the dragon skeleton with a sword sticking through it. So cool. And then we also have this one, which is a small with a dragon skull. We still go on. I so wanted to start one of these during the retreat, but um, the retreat happened like the week before, the weekend before we were launching um, like the game my company works on. And I was just so, I was tired. I don't think I slept a wink the night before the retreat. Like quite literally, I was just up. Uh, so I'm, I just was like, if I start something new, I know I'm gonna mess it up. So I just spent, I just worked on my raccoon and it was fine and you know, just listened for a lot of it, uh, <laughs> but it worked out. But I still really wanna start one. And like, I, I love both of them so much, but I think I'll start with the small because like I've got a lot of projects on the go. I have some plans. I don't wanna start something not that this is huge. I think this one's it's 96 by 107. Like it's not massive, but this is just 63 by 52. And I could like bang that out pretty quick. So I think I'll start with that just to, 
just to stitch something new and cool and just have a finish pretty quickly, you know? Anyway, so we got those patterns. Um, also in the box, we got this fabric, which is big enough for both patterns. Very exciting. You can see that. Mine's, uh, oh Lord, is this a 36 count linen? I think there's a tag somewhere in here. Oh, I can't remember, but anyway, this is lovely fabric. And we also got, oh, this really cool needle minder. Oops, sorry, I'm like bumping my camera. Love that. And we have the thread to stitch on. And this is uh, Stitch Our Projects With. This is from Brin and Needle. There are two colors. There's Stravanger Things. Stravanger? I don't know. I think they're all named after like Newfie stuff, you know? stuff from Newfoundland and I am I've never been to Newfoundland I'm unaware of many of the pronunciations of things over there so yeah we got that one which is like this really cool like kind of bloody red purple color and we also have spiled rotten which has like some really intense variegation like super duper cool I think I might use this one for the small and then use this one for the big one the big one and uh yeah what else oh, we've got these like i don't know what these are counting pins well there's a needle in here but we got these beautiful pins which i could probably use in the finished project honestly and da -da -da -da. here we go little floss drops Woo. super cute nice so anyway Beautiful package, absolutely lovely, great retreat. When like 10 out of 10 would go to Spring Fling again. Um, hopefully I can get secure a spot next year. Um, but yeah, just obsessed with these patterns. I really, I don't know when I'll start it, but I wanna start, I wanna start the small for sure. Um, okay, what else do we have? All right, so moving on. Um, I, have never stitched anything from the Frosted Pumpkin before. The Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. The Frosted Pump? Is it just Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery? You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, they are starting a new sale called uh, Castle Homecoming Club, and it just looks so cute. The teasers that they were posting were so sweet. And the one that got me was there was a tiny little frog with a crown on it, and I'm like, I, clearly I just I need to stitch this pattern so they were selling kits that had all the DMC and the fabric and they um, printed off like little floss drops that you could cut out so I'm like boom that's easy I don't have to like go on like some epic quest through my Michaels trying to find all the DMC I need from this I can get the fabric that they are recommending so I got the package and it also comes with fancy floss too. There's two, two things of fancy floss. Oh, and some, my favorite needle, Bohin. Love those needles. Yeah, we, what's the other one called? Pixie dust. I suppose I can open the bag. So we got the fancy flosses, pixie dust and black smith blue. Super cute. And it came with, I think this is 32 count Valor from Picture This Plus, sure is, Valor. So yes, I will be starting this this week, actually. I think the first pattern drops on the 25th, so I will likely start it on the 26th because I'm going away for a couple days. But I got that, so that came, exciting. Uh, alrighty, what else do I have? Okay, <laughs> okay, so you know how I'm always like complaining about my local Michaels? I shouldn't complain it about them. They're there for me when I need them, but their fabric selection is abysmal. They have recently expanded no longer just white 14 count Ada. I went in there the other day and they've got like, to be fair, it's still like, it's still just 28 count linen. They don't have like a, a wide variety of counts, but they have like pretty Ada now. So this one is, you can kind of see the sparkle. Yeah. It's like an iridescent kind of peachy Ada, a friend of mine wants me to make them a piece and I will likely be putting it on this. And I got this one as well because it's so gorgeous. Look at that. It's kind of like a pinky purpley blue. 
really light modeling, but really, really nice. So I was like, <laughs> okay, I like having just like, whatever, a stash of fabric to use. And this was so pretty that I had to pick it up. And I'm like, you know, I, I prefer to stitch on linen, but I'm not like anti Ada or anything like that. And if I see something cute, I'm going to go for it. So I got those and what else did I do? Okay. Two more bits of haul. Well, two bits of haul from two different vendors, several bits of haul from each of those vendors. <laughs> okay. So uh, one of my plans is, um, upcoming is I want to have a pride piece and I love how, uh, what is it called? Move forward in love looks from modern folk embroidery. So for pride month, I wanted to have a pride start and I wanted it to be that pattern. So I went to modern folk embroidery. I've actually never purchased any of Jacob's patterns before, but they are so gorgeous. Like I've been a long time admirer, just haven't like pulled the trigger on it. But with June rapidly approaching, I was like, okay, well let's get that pattern and see what else strikes my fancy in the store. And of course, several things did. So I will just put the pictures of the patterns up here. But of course I got Move Forward in Love, which was, uh, I think it was from last year. It was a Pride stitch along that lasted three months, I believe. Um, I've seen a number of people stitching it. I really, really love it. It would make like a lovely pillow. Um, I'm talking about pillows a lot. I've never made a pillow. We're going to figure it out. We're going to learn how to make a pillow and my house will be full of them and it'll drive my husband crazy. I'm sure of it. <laughs> um, anyway, so we got move forward in love. Um, I was feeling, you know, my goth self, uh, that day. And I also picked up spirits of the dead. Uh, all are equal in death and Mr. Bones in the garden. <laughs> Cause it's a very cute, small. Love Mr. Bones. And I also picked up Moonshine Cabin, which I thought was just stunning. And Song of the Nightingale, seen here. And finally, I just, what am I trying to say? I bit the bullet, bit the bullet? Is that what I'm trying to say? I, I decided to take the plunge. Let's go with that metaphor. <laughs> I took the plunge and I bought Fruits of Plenty. This is a project I've seen so many people stitch on. Everyone ha is doing something different. It's also gorgeous. Like I'm particularly obsessed with Marjorie Maid's pinks. I just love the colors she selected for this piece. Um, so anyway, having been a long admirer of everyone stitching on it, I decided to pick it up for myself. I don't know when I'm gonna start it. I'm thinking it might even be like a, a start. I do like a new year, new start next year. But we'll see. I'll figure out how to work it into the rotation because I have like quite a few pieces like I, I want to stitch beforehand or start at least. Um, but this, it's so beautiful and I need to take some time to consider the colors I might want to go with it. But um, yeah, I want to have it for myself. So I figured I'd get it and start stitching at some point in the future, undetermined at this time. <laughs> All right, uh, that, oh, no, that's not it for haul. One last thing, I finally decided to jump on in and join Night Spirit Studios' Patreon. Uh, she had made a Hellraiser-themed pattern for April. Um, it's this one here, Jesus Wept. I love Hellraiser. I love those movies. I love Clive Barker. I have... A number of his books fit in here, including, come on now, including The Hellbound Heart, which is the novella that Hellraiser is based on. So good. If you like nursty horror, check it out. Nursty in that it's absolutely disgusting and vile and wonderful. <laughs> so if you like something gross and bloody, definitely read The Hellbound Heart and watch Hellraiser, which I love. Um, Am I gonna cut this? I don't know. I cut a dump truck earlier, but this is just, this is just like Vancouver city life. There's always a siren. <laughs> All right, anyway. Uh, so yes, I got the, I signed up specifically to get that pattern, even though like she's been putting out pieces for ages that I'm like, oh, I should sign up for that. And then like, I just never do. But I did this time. So I got April's pattern 
and I was also able to download March's pattern, which was the Widow Frog, which is so cute. Just look at her, little frog. <laughs> I love her pieces so much. Um, she has not released anything from May just yet, so I'm excited to see what that will be. Um, but yeah, so that's it for haul. That's it. It's quite a bit of things, but anyway, that's the haul. Uh, let's talk about plans. So plans for me, before the end of the month, I'm definitely going to be finishing off that room for the chopping mall. So we got that. Um, as mentioned, I am going to be starting Castle Homecoming from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. That pattern drops on the 25th. I will likely start it on the 26th. Um, I'm going away for just a couple days for kind of like a anniversary thing. Um, we're going to Galliano Island, which I've never been to, and it looks lovely. And I've got like a cabin with a hot tub that looks at the ocean. <gasps> so I'm just gonna be sitting in that like for three days and boiling myself alive. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so while I'm away, I will be bringing some pieces with me to stitch, trying to decide what they'll still be. I think I might bring this so I can start it. And I know I also want to work a bit more on um, The Richest Season from Twin Peak Primitives, as well as There's Always Room from um, Maximum Cross Stitch. So I'll likely bring like all that with me so I have some options. Um, other than that, what else do I have? I think that's about it. Oh, right. June 1st, because I won't be making another video before then. June 1st is when I want to start moving forward in love. And I have this beautiful fabric coming. Um, it has not arrived. Otherwise this would have all been in the hall too. But I went to, I was looking everywhere for like a pink that I liked. And a lot of the, the dyers I found that could like easily ship up here, like they didn't really have any pinks or it wasn't really what I was looking for. So I had kind of given up and I went to the sewing shop, the sewing shop.ca, .ca? I think it's just the, sh I'll put it at the bottom. But anyway, they are a Canadian um, company. They do project bags, they do fabrics and, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, they had this really cool, like super splotchy molted pink fabric. I'll throw what the um, preview looked like here. I don't know what my piece is gonna look like. And I actually don't even know if this is gonna be like too intense for the project, but I, I figure I could make it work. Like I could select an area that isn't quite as like intense. I already have my threads. I bought them a while ago. I bought the uh, the rainbow collection basically from um, Evertote, the, the uh, Roxy Floss Co. I think it is Roxy Floss Co threads. They have like a rainbow collection you can buy from Evertote. So I bought those. I've got my pink fabric on the way and hopefully it's gonna work color-wise. I think it will. The color is so beautiful. So fingers crossed there. Um, I also have two project bags coming, but you'll see those in the next video. Um, the sewing shop makes the best project bags. Like if you want something big, which I like having having a big bag. This is one of one of the ones I have. Super cute. I have my dark queen in here right now and it fits. So I, I threw her in an eight by 11 Q snap. Fits perfectly. Love it. So anyway, they got great bags. I suggest checking them out. I'll show you the ones I bought when they arrive in my next video and you can admire them then. Okay, so I think that is it for everything stitching. I'm gonna talk about what I've been watching, reading and playing now. If you are not interested in that, uh, you can mosey along. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more, check out my previous videos, subscribe below, give this video a like. Let me know what you're stitching on in the comments. I'm curious. <laughs> I always love hearing what people are working on. And uh, yeah. If that is, if you're just here for stitching, then I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Um, okay, let's move on to our next section. What am I watching right now? I am still kind of brain frazzled from the amount of work I've been doing. I have this week off, which is like excellent and is gonna be very good for the resetting of things, but I haven't really been able to pay attention to a lot of TV. So I've been watching a lot 
very similar to last video, like a lot of horror. I have two recommendations. Uh, one was a film I have been meaning to see for quite some time. It's called The Ritual. It's on Netflix. It's so good. It's about a group of friends who decide to go on like a, a lad's vacation, basically. And one of their friends has died and they decide to go on a vacation that he wanted to go on, which was like a hike in the Swedish wilderness. <laughs> And the friends go on this hike and they decide to take a shortcut through the woods. And that turns out very poorly for them because there is a presence in the woods that is very interested in um, sacrificing them essentially. So it's part cult, part supernatural film, I'd say like, those genres um it's subgenres i guess of horror it was so good though very very um powerful film uh really kind of goes into the characters struggles their grief of their lost friend the guilt um at least one of the characters carries anyway uh for his part or what he sees as his part in his friend's death and um yeah it's super intense and wow the creature design on this is incredible um there is there is a monster in this movie and it looks it looks amazing like it's so creepy and cool and just something i haven't seen before so i loved the ritual i would suggest checking that out and another movie i watched last night we were looking for something kind of like light and fun so we put on, we had watched Aladdin earlier that day, just kind of on a Disney kick. And we decided to watch Howard right after that about Howard Ashman, who was the lyricist for, he did Little Shop of Horrors with Alan Menken and did Aladdin, Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast. And yeah, it's just a documentary about him. Um, he unfortunately died quite young due to the AIDS epidemic. And um, it's just a, like a really beautiful portrait of him and just really highlighted, you know, what a talent he was and um, all the work he had done. And, you know, really just, um, you know, it was a good watch and it definitely, it makes, it's just sad to think what else he could have done had he survived. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely check out Howard. It's on Disney Plus. If you like those movies, like definitely learn about the man who helped bring them to life. Like I'm, I'm just always astounded by the lyrics of those films. I'm a huge musical theater fan and really, <laughs> He's, he's very clever, so I enjoyed that film quite a bit. Um, all right, what else? Outside of horror, I have also been watching a lot of Floss Tube. Uh, this is just something that like I can throw on in the background. I can see pretty patterns. I can just listen to people's soothing voices. So that's what I've been doing with most of my time actually is just watching Floss Tube. I have been going through the Huga Stitcher's backlog specifically. Um, she's a lot of fun. She's got a great energy about her and um, she's a fellow Canadian, which I love. So uh, she's in Winnipeg, quite a ways from Vancouver, but still awesome. Um, and yeah, I just love, I just really like her energy, quite honestly, but I love seeing what she's working on. She's a lot of fun. She just dropped a video a couple days ago that I really enjoyed. And um, what else have I been watching? Oh, I've been watching Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. Um, obviously, she's been on Floss Tube for ages now, um, and she's just so cool. Like, I'm really, it really, uh, I always admire people who can, like, handle more than one craft because I just, I'm like, <laughs> I'm a one craft kind of gal. Um, not to say that I don't want to learn other things, but it's like, I can only dedicate my focus to one thing at a time, essentially. So to see her, you know, making all these like crazy cool projects and then like, she's going to start knitting again. And 
she's got all this like amazing cross stitch stuff and she's finishing it herself and it's just very cool. So I, I always love watching her videos. I like the tutorials she puts out. She's super cool. So I've had a, um, a good time watching a lot of her content. Um, yeah, and I've been I've been watching others, but I'd say those two are kind of the main ones. I'm like like beelining now, beelining, mainlining is what I want to say. They're the, they're the two I'm mainlining right now, uh, watching all their back content basically. But um, yeah, so that's been good. Uh, what am I reading? So I haven't finished any books. Again, I've been very like Wah! discombobulated. But my friend lent me a book a few weeks ago that I have been reading on and off. And I plan to bring it with me to the island and I will likely finish it because it's it's a pretty easy read. It is just like the ultimate cozy comfort read. It is a fantasy novel called Legends and Lattes and it is about an orc who is done adventuring and she decides to set up a coffee shop in a region of the world that has never heard of coffee. So it's super cute, like very very fluffy, very light, just super fun kind of fantasy themed food themed like hashtag cozy reads you know <laughs> it's really cute um if you like anything fantasy themed i'd suggest it if you're looking for something like kind of light slice of life reading about people eating cinnamon rolls and enjoying them you know <laughs> um i'm about halfway through it i should be able to finish it pretty soon but it's just been nice to read something like very low stakes. Um, and finally, what am I playing? I, like the rest of the planet, have been playing Zelda. <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom just dropped. Uh, was it last week? It was the 12th, May 12th it came out. And um, it's pretty good. It's a lot like Breath of the Wild if you ever played that game. It's like very open world. Um, but in this one, you can engineer things. So like you can like fuse items to your weapons. You can like create machinery basically out of like all these components, connect things. Like I don't understand how long their team must have had to work to make those physics possible in the game, but it's really quite a marvel. Like it's, it's and it's a lot of fun to play with. I will say the controls really bug me though. Like. Modern gaming, you should be able to remap your controls to be whatever you want. So, you know, you want your X button to be jump or hit with your weapon or, or whatever. They, there is no control mapping in this game. There's like one thing you can do and that's like you can invert like what your jump button is and what your run button is, but they're always like super far away from each other, like on opposite, on opposite sides of the like four, the four, what am I trying to say? I can't remember the buttons on uh, Nintendo right now, but it's like, oh, is it like X, X to run or X to jump or whatever. I like to be able to like hold the run button down and, and tap with my thumb to, to jump. You can't do that in this game. They're like, they're mapped so far apart. I don't understand why. Uh, it, <laughs> so anyway, I find that frustrating. Hashtag gamer rants. Um, but other than, the, than my issues with the controls, uh, the game is beautiful. It's really cool. And um, yeah, it's been fun. I've also been checking out Dredge, which is really cool. You are a fisherman um, just trying to make a living and there are creepy things in the ocean. <laughs> it's very Lovecraftian weirdness. Uh, if you fish at night, a big owl fish, big <laughs> if you fish at night, there's a big fish that'll come around and try and like knock your boat over basically if you have your lights on. Uh, if you don't have your lights on, there are terrifying red eyes that stare at you from the sea. <laughs> so dredge is very cool as well. I've been enjoying that, but, um, you know, most of my time has been taken up by Zelda now that it's out. Um, but yeah, I'd recommend checking out both those games. All right. And that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you hung around to the end, thank you very much. Um, like I said earlier, if you enjoy what you saw here, be sure to subscribe for more. If you want to follow along with what I'm doing on Instagram, I also share my stitching there. You can find me at cinematic. Uh, the E is a three and it is not 
a dedicated cross stitch account like I do post a lot of cross stitch but it also has um, just my life as well so if that's not your thing don't worry about it <laughs> you will likely see uh, videos of my cat uh, live music shows I'm at weird things I see on the street I'll just throw up there um, so you know it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea but that's fine anyway that is that it was lovely to talk to y'all and i hope you enjoyed this and yeah i will see you again in a couple weeks okay bye bye